When a product or service is just not good enough, the best companies integrate. That is, they gather up all the pieces together and create a superior experience. In this video, let's see how Google intends to make a better internet experience. That is, let's see how they intend to make the world's information a lot more accessible. Now, Google is slowly and methodically transforming itself into a different type of company, a type of organization the world has never seen before, the first truly integrated internet company. Part one, who controls the internet? Let's think about all the companies we deal with just to get online. First, we pay a company to connect to its network, whether it's wirelessly or through cables. Wireless carriers sell access to their networks that are built on radio spectrum licensed by the government, while ISPs sell access to their cables that are running into your home. Both types of companies sell access to what is called the last mile. That is, the part of the network that brings the internet to the screen you're looking at right now. And most of their profits come from charging subscribers for access. Now, compared to Europe, prices in the US are relatively high. And on the wireless side, thanks to some healthy competition coming from T-Mobile, Finally, data prices have been inching down. Still, despite all the technological advances, upgrading the last mile will always be the most expensive and complex, and really it'll be the biggest bandwidth bottleneck for most users. Now on the opposite side of the network, we have young internet companies that offer services like streaming music and video, social networks, productivity, and shopping. Because of their innovations, we can watch videos like this one, stream movies, browse social feeds, do some work, check email, or even play some video games. Now to survive, every company must make money either directly from subscribers or from businesses that choose to advertise on their platforms. And Google has proven that some awesome free internet services can be built on top of advertising money. But right now, there's an epic power struggle over who's going to control the future of the internet. You see, broadcasting cable companies used to have a monopoly on every single screen in the house. But today, millions of cable subscribers realize they'll be just fine with YouTube, Netflix, and iTunes, so they decide to cut the cord in order to save money. And in response to make up for these losses, Comcast wants to charge these young internet companies for access to a fast lane that'll allow their websites to load more quickly. This means that if a young internet company wants to offer its users a better experience, they'll have to pay Comcast first. So late last year, President Obama weighed in on the debate. Ever since the internet was created, it's been organized around basic principles of openness, fairness, and freedom. And that's why I'm urging the Federal Communications Commission to do everything they can to protect net neutrality for everyone. The public has already commented nearly four million times, asking the FCC to make sure that consumers not the cable company, gets to decide which sites they use. Now, the telecommunication industry knows that in the future they're going to have a money problem. They claim that they need the money in order to invest in upgrading the last mile. So they're doing other things to try to improve their cash flow, namely mergers and acquisitions. If Comcast buys Time Warner and AT&T buys DirecTV, combined these two companies will control about two-thirds of the pay TV market. Monopoly power is definitely one way to try to preserve your business. And finally, this epic power struggle will culminate on February 26th when the FCC will vote on new rules governing the internet and net neutrality. And a big company like Google, a core component of the internet, really has to have a plan one way or the other. Part 2. The first integrated internet company. So while lobbyists and regulators are busy fighting over the rules, Google has been showing the telecommunications industry how to properly build and manage the last mile. First, Google Fiber. Google has been busy stringing fiber optic cables in neighborhoods, running cables into homes, and configuring Google routers, TV boxes, and DVRs for a lucky subset of customers. And just the other day, Google Fiber announced an expansion of this program into these eastern cities. So at its core, Fiber really represents a new and challenging business model for the company. By controlling and managing the entire internet experience, from the content stored in their data centers, to the wires running through neighborhoods and into homes, Google is truly the first integrated internet company. Meanwhile, the rest of us are here eating peanut butter and jelly. But the biggest growth online is really through wireless data. Tier 1 carriers control 95% of the wireless revenue in the US, and in the first half of this year, Google is preparing to take an even bigger step. It's going to launch its own wireless network. Well, 
Kind of, sort of. Google will offer wireless services as a mobile virtual network operator. An MVNO purchases wireless data from existing carriers and resells them to customers at a discount. Today, the biggest MVNO is TrackPhone with its signature brand, Straight Talk. This company buys wireless data from AT&T, Verizon, or T-Mobile and sells them and distributes their phones through Walmart. Now, if you're gonna compete against an established company or brand, you really need to offer something different. And according to some early reports, Google Wireless will be able to seamlessly switch between T-Mobile, Sprint, or Wi-Fi networks to ensure that you have the most reliable connection. If true, this will be the first service that offers this unprecedented amount of network flexibility. But there are a couple of challenges. First, compatible phones will have to support the bands on Sprint and T-Mobile, phones like the Nexus 6 and the iPhone 6 Unlocked. So initially, the choices will be limited. Second, distribution. Google needs to either set up its own operations or outsource them to a third party like existing retail stores. And last, Sprint has a clause limiting the size of Google's user base, so there'll be some potential problems if the business gets really popular and chooses to scale up. But Google definitely has some really strong advantages that no other company can match. Lately, most wireless services are shifting away from voice to more data-centric experience. Think of services like WhatsApp, Snapchat, Google Voice, Google Hangouts, or Voice over LTE. As an organization, Google has definitely built up the expertise to deliver a smooth data-centric experience. Also, Google has the largest advertising platform on the internet. With its video, search, and mobile platforms, it can create a huge campaign. You may even see Google commercials rolling before these videos. Another point, Google's business model doesn't depend on selling internet access to subscribers like the cable or wireless carriers. Its core business is still advertising, so Google Wireless can afford to offer its service at or near cost. And finally, Google just made a huge investment in SpaceX a space technology company that hopes to launch 4,000 internet satellites into orbit over the next five years. So in the meantime, Google's wireless services will help the company build the expertise in retail, marketing, and customer support should they ever need to manage the front end of this type of business. So to wrap things up, to traditional incumbents like Comcast and AT&T, Google is a dangerous competitor with a huge arsenal of resources and engineering talent. And all these efforts fit perfectly with Google's mission, that is to make the world's information more accessible. By simultaneously cutting prices and offering better service, both Google Fiber and Google Wireless will make the internet a much better experience, at least for those who have it. So thank you guys for watching, liking, and sharing these videos as always. Uh, again, this video was unexpected, but after completing the previous video over SpaceX and how Google's investing in that company, it led me down a path to look at what Google's doing with Fiber and its new upcoming wireless services this year. So I hope you guys like it. I still owe you a video on NVIDIA and AMD. I'm still researching it. Hope to have it out by the end of this week, as long as no big tech news comes out that really changes the way uh, people see the world. So I'm really excited by what Google has to offer. I'm hoping they come here. Unfortunately, I don't live in the San Jose Palo Alto area, but it would be nice to know that they're just right next door. So one day we might move down there and uh, take advantage of it just for that, but prices are just ridiculous over there. I don't know how people can afford to live there. Anyways, most of all, I wanted to thank you guys for spending your time here watching these videos as we continue to explore how technology changes things.